Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Today's video is going to be a bit of a fun one. We're going to talk about this really neat little product. It's called the Duke Audio A100. It's a, a stereo amplifier or it can be a mono amplifier, but it's got some really kind of cool features on it. And we're going to dive into it a little deeper and we're going to crack it open and have some fun inside. So sit back, relax, and we'll talk about the Duke Audio A100. So the Duke Audio A100 is a cool little Class D stereo amplifier. It is based around the TI-3255 amplifier chip which was highly prized for a its power delivery and b its sound quality which is really quite good so with the 48 volt 5 amp power supply that comes with the unit you'll get 110 watts by 2 into 8 ohms and in mono it will go 300 watts into 4 ohms but the amplifier stable into 2 ohm loads should you want to do that and i think it's capable of that because from a thermal management standpoint the heat sinks the extrusion Everything is really well designed. I don't think heat is going to be an issue with this amplifier unless you put it in a really confined space and it doesn't get any airflow, but it's very well thought out from a thermal standpoint. Now we're going to start over on this side and I'm going to talk about the control. So this switch takes it out of off to mono so I can change it, make it a mono amp from the front panel. There's nothing on the back I have to play with or I can make it obviously stereo amp. So on mono stereo. This is basically takes it out of what's called flat mode, which is your stereo mode or not or non crossover mode into the sub mode. So it has two controls for the subwoofer. So here's the idea. Let's say you're a DIY speaker builder and you want to build your own subwoofer. Here's your amp for it. Everything's here. I've got a variable crossover between 50 and 220 hertz and I've got a what's called super bass control. So now I can control the bass level and make it tailor sound the passive subwoofer sound the way I want it. And I think that's really neat. It also has an auxiliary volume control. We'll talk about that when we get to the back. And then of course our master volume control. So let me insert a picture of the back panel and we'll spin it around. Obviously single ended only. We have the auxiliary. Now that auxiliary volume control in the front controls this output. What's it for? Let's say I wanted to run a second system in a different part of the room or I wanted to run a powered a pair of powered speakers in addition to my regular desktop speakers or whatever but they're not convenient to adjust volume I can do it from here from the auxiliary output but better yet I can plug this into a powered subwoofer with its own crossover and amplifier and everything else and I can get that set the way I want it to get it you know installed where it needs to be and then I can actually control the subwoofer volume from the amplifier rather than getting down on my hands and knees reaching around the back of the subwoofer figuring out which knob to turn properly then go back and sit down and listen and go adjust and back and sit down and listen I can do it all right from here and make that final adjustment from my listening position which I think is really good good high quality uh, binding post and obviously barrel connector for the 48 volt 5 amp power supply this unit is really well constructed and we're going to crack it open and you're going to see inside that it is good quality components but it has a party piece which is a lot of fun and you can roll op amps in this and we're going to do that i'm going to show you a bunch of different op amp uh, options for you and uh, it's really cool and it'll be a lot of fun but first a word from today's sponsor flexi spot you know they say it's better to be lucky than good and i was very very fortunate when the folks at flexi spot reached out to me about their e6 dual motor desk and their oc6 ergonomic office chair this has been a significant addition to my channel without any doubt now i have a wonderful comfortable work spot that i can do my headphone reviews i can do my small component reviews i can do some light editing on the videos and it has just been wonderful now the e6 dual motor desk is magnificently well built now one thing i do want to mention is as i was assembling this and i was unpacking it from the shipping the shipping boxes it was incredibly well packed it was incredibly well laid out everything was padded appropriately and in, in, in plastic and so forth it was just wonderful there's no grease there was no mess and that surprised me because in the past i've run into that so the packaging was wonderful the tabletop the desktop packaging was wonderful no marks no scratches no nothing so a lot of thought went into just the packaging alone and a lot of thought went into the instruction manual which is 
very, very clearly written and very precise and made assembly super easy. And I'll insert some pictures of me sitting on the floor putting it together just so you guys can have a good laugh. But the E6 dual motor desk is incredibly heavily constructed, very well engineered. From what I understand, it is all recycled materials. The, uh, all of the steel has been recycled. The motors are strong and powerful and very, very quiet. It will support 355 pounds. I am not gonna sit on the desk, that's just not me, but I love it and I love the bamboo surface. And of course, bamboo is a very renewable and sustainable resource, which I think just is beautiful. It's hard, it's very, very durable. This thing is really, really stable. And it had, came with casters, so I can move it when I need to. I think that's really significantly important. One of the things I really like, and I'll insert a picture of it, is the control panel here on the front. It allows me to manually adjust the height if I want to, but it also gives me four presets so that I can have my sitting preset or if I want, I can have my standing preset and it'll just automatically come up to a predetermined height where I feel comfortable. Now, this has been a real boon. And I think for the channel, it's been great because now I have the spot that I need to go ahead and do my headphone reviews and some light editing, as I mentioned just really really nice and you can see how smooth and stable that is now let's talk about the chair and actually i'm going to change positions a little bit and zoom in so you can get a better look at this thing because it's remarkable so the oc6 office chair is really wonderful it's a wonderful mesh material it is very well constructed now i've had a lot of i'm six foot four and 230 pounds and i've had a lot of issues with office chairs in the past where you go down to the corner of office supply uh, chain and you buy whatever chair is on sale and of course after a month or two that hydraulic cylinder just can't support the weight and you start sagging and that's a problem now this is designed to support 500 pounds and you can tell in the structure of the chair not only the cylinder but the structure of the chair the materials used the mechanisms and so forth in the operation it's very robust and very very well engineered as you can see from the back it is put together quite well and one of the things I really love about it is, again, being a big guy, is having the back of the chair be the right height and having the adjustable headrest. I can move that up or down wherever I want to, and I can find a comfortable position when I'm leaning back so I can do my headphone reviews and so forth. And the lumbar support is excellent. And again, the base of the seat. Now, this is a game changer for me. Most chairs don't provide me enough support, thigh support, under my leg out to my knee so what winds up happening is i get a kind of a hot spot and a kind of an uncomfortable spot right around in here well with this chair because of the way it's designed i can actually slide the bottom out scooch back a little bit and now i've got support all the way out almost to my knees so i am comfortable and that is so important again with my back issues and my leg issues the ability to find a comfortable position for all of this between the desk and the chair I can't say thank you enough to FlexiSpot for, for reaching out to me with this product. It is exceptional. Now, the 15-year uh, warranty on the table and the mechanism and a 10-year warranty on the chair, you know, FlexiSpot's been around for a very long time. And if you go to their web spot, website, FlexiSpot.com, you'll see they offer a wide variety of furniture products and all kinds of different products. And all of them are very well engineered and very well thought out. And this is impressive to me. So anyway... FlexiSpot, thank you so very much for sponsoring today's video. I am very grateful. I did want to show you that while you're disassembling, you will have to take the little nuts off from around the potentiometer so that the faceplate can come off and the rear plate can come off. I'm not going to bore you with all of that, but I just wanted to make note that you do have to remove these nuts. Okay, to do the rest of the screws around the side of the unit, the bottom and the back, you're going to need a two millimeter little Allen wrench. This is how I use it. So now I've got the screws from the side of the unit out. I can remove the face plate. Now I put some little rubber feet on it, which kind of hold it at the bottom. And we'll just work that face plate off. And there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the rear panel off and then we can slide the board out and get access to those op amps. Don't forget to do the two screws on the bottom. Well, as you can see, op amps galore. Pro tip, before you st start swapping op amps, go get yourself a set of the eight pin dip risers. These are very inexpensive and it makes it so much easier. If you look at the standard chip, these little legs, the little uh, legs on it can bend, bend if you look at them wrong. And so by inserting them into 
The riser, you get a nice robust pin, you can plug and unplug, and these things are dirt cheap. So what did I try? Well, the standard uh, op amps that come with it are the TI-5532s, and they sound quite good, and that's what these are right here. I also tried the Texas Instruments OPA-1656. Very good choice, excellent choice. Just to answer the burning question, no, the Sparkos 3602s will not fit in there. Even if you put enough risers on it to make it fit, you'd never get the unit back in the case, and therefore you'd lose the thermal uh, benefits of that extruded aluminum case. So I did try these, which are NOS Burr Brown. These are, uh, excuse me, these are OPA 2604s NOS, but I did find a great match here with these NOS Burr Brown 2134, OPA 2134s. This was excellent. So what you wanna do is you wanna get your dip switch, your, I'm sorry, your dip socket. And if you notice on the op amp itself, there's a little notch right there, right at the head of the, where it says OPA. And that notch corresponds with the notch on the socket, which then corresponds with the notch on the socket on the board. So you go ahead and insert your chips. And this one's already, these little legs are so easy to bend that you just, if you look at them wrong, they're gonna bend. So, and that one's doing that. So I've gone ahead and inserted it in the socket. And then again, notch, notch, notch. So we're gonna go ahead and insert it in the amp. I apologize for my clumsiness. That one's in. So now we're gonna grab another one. And again, notch, notch. I hope you can see that. We're gonna insert that. And this does, these dip, risers make it so much easier to work with these things because you don't have to worry about bending these pins super bendy and again notch notch and we just go ahead and insert it and the the dip eight socket risers are absolutely so much more robust than the pin so now we've rolled the op amps in the Duke Audio A100 amplifier, which is kind of cool. So these actually sounded, I thought, a little better than the TI OPA 1656s. And so just an excellent choice overall, but play around. There's millions of op amps available online and, and eBay's got tons of them. That's where I got mine. Um, the OPA 1656s weren't that expensive um, and well worth it. I thought these little Burr Brown, this particular one, the 20, excuse me, the 2134s had an excellent sound, great bass. Anyway, so that's op amp swapping inside the Duke Audio A100. I'm gonna put it all back together. We're gonna to come back and we're gonna talk about how it sounds. Well, as you can see from looking inside the Duke Audio A100, it's really well put together with good quality components. But one of the things I like most about it is the ability to swap op amps and tailor the sound to your particular needs. Now, I did all my listening tests with the stock op amps in it, and it sounded quite good. I did put it in the big room on the big Wharfdales, and it sounded okay, but it didn't really have enough power to drive those properly, and I don't think that's inten its intended use. Maybe if I had a second one and I ran them in mono, I'd have gotten a different result. But where this really came alive was when I brought it in put it in the desktop on the ELAC DBR62s, it really sounded good. Bass was good, mid-range was, and upper frequencies, maybe a bit cool, but not bad. But when I swapped in the uh, Burr Brown OPA 2134 op amps, things got really, really interesting. Bass was a little deeper and better defined, much smoother mid-range and upper frequencies, which you guys know is my sound signature. So I was very pleased with it. I think this would be a great product on a desktop or a second system, maybe running some affordable bookshelf speakers like ELAC BS41s or Sony SSCS5s. Very rewarding. Now I used it paired up with a Duke Audio DAC, and this is the interesting one that's got the two DAC chips in it, one from ESS and one from AKM. And I'm going to be doing a review on that. I'll be the probably the hundredth review done. But what I'm going to do is crack it open. And guess what, guys? We're going to swap some op amps in there, and it will take a Sparkos op amp. I also fed the whole system with a Wii Mini. So nice little budget desktop system. Really rewarding, very pleasant. Um, obviously, I do some work at the desk, and I and I you know kind of do some pre-roll editing and things like that. And having this as this, the sound system really helps that out a great deal. 
So I really enjoyed my time with the Duke Audio A100 and hopefully you enjoyed your time with me and you'd be willing to give me a like and, a, and be willing to subscribe to the channel. And if you wish, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window and you want to buy me a granola bar. And someone did send me an entire box of granola bars anonymously. I don't know who it is and I'd like to find out. I have a suspicion, but I'd like to find out and thank them personally. Also too, if you wish, you can join the channel. There's a membership link in the pinned comment and also in the video description. And also in the video description are affiliate links and obviously we know the drill on those. There's a listing of all the equipment I use in the studio. There's also playlist down there. I've asked you guys to send me playlists. Please continue to do so. We're building a nice community page with playlists on it. If you want to comment, please do so. I always respond to the comments. Um, I enjoy that conversation that we can have, and it really is kind of fun. Also, too, if you are so inclined, you can follow me on Instagram. And I think that's everything I need to say. I'm Ed Homewood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel, and now it's time for you to go listen to some audio, maybe on a really nice desktop system with a Duke Audio amplifier in it. Thanks so very much and have a great day.